New testing sites have been announced for the Test Nebraska program, with dates set for this Thursday and Friday here in Scotts Bluff. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, hundreds of residents from Scotts Bluff and the surrounding communities will have the ability to get COVID-19 testing later this week through the Test Nebraska program. Governor Pete Ricketts made the announcement yesterday during his daily media briefing. For the National Guard with the Test Nebraska is going to be in Omaha, Lincoln, uh, North Platte, Scotts Bluff, Thedford, West Point, and Dakota City. So we'll be traveling around the state doing the testnebraska.com to be able to uh, continue to promote that program and do more testing statewide. The testing will take place Thursday and Friday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. and again from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Panhandle Public Health District's offices on West 16th Street. Folks will need to take the online assessment at testnebraska.com to see if they qualify and will answer questions asking if they've been exposed to someone with the coronavirus or if they are experiencing any of the symptoms. Well, Gehring Senator John Stinner says the drop in tax receipts reported by state revenue officials last week was not a surprise, but it was better than he had expected. Corporate and personal income taxes were down about $300 million from projections after the governor moved the filing deadline from April to July 15th. Stinner, the chair of the legislature's appropriation committee, told KNB News that he would rather wait a few months to see details of the virus pandemic on the current budget. I'd like to wait till about August so we can see what has happened in June, that $305 million needs to show up in July, and I have some fears that even though taxes are due, those businesses may be out of business, out of money, or something along those lines. Stinner says if the legislature can wait until later, they'll have a better chance to track those changes, as well as getting more solid figures on sales, employment, and other taxes. He says a lot of what lawmakers can do will depend on the shape of the economic recovery as the months progress. Well, coming up after the break, we got an early taste of summer like weather today. Some strong storms could be working their way into the region tomorrow. Bill Boyer's got your Tuesday evening forecast right after this on KNEB.TV News. Local lending. We're here for you from start to finish. Keeping money in our economy. Supporting local jobs. Giving back to our community investing in entrepreneurship, making our quiet towns a destination. At Platte Valley Bank, we support local because we are local. Take your career to the next level with Shadron State College's online Master of Business Administration program, taught by experienced professors who care about your success. The accredited, fully online MBA program is backed by CSE's more than 100 years of education leadership. Flexible, eight-week courses let you work at your own pace, wherever you are, and CSE's experienced professors are committed to your success. Shadron State College. Real people. Real results. Join us today at csc.edu. is KNEV.TV weather from the KNEV Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Well, we're going to be dealing with uh, some clouds tonight across the area. A couple of scattered storms around, temps falling into the 60s and then eventually down into the 50s as we get ready for tomorrow. A couple of storms tonight, severe storms are going to be around tomorrow. Really all modes of severe weather are possible tomorrow. Talking large hail, damaging winds, uh, even some isolated tornadoes on the table as well. It's going to be a quieter holiday weekend, but uh, we're watching tomorrow. 
uh, certainly as an active day. 81 yesterday after a morning low of 46, so about where we should be for this time of year. Nothing in the rain gauge yesterday, still an inch above normal for the month of May, and we're likely going to add to that. Temps were mild today, well into the 80s here in our area. Contrast that with 60s here in eastern portions of Nebraska. 83 at Casper, 78 in Craig. How about DIA checking in right now at 85 degrees? We have 77 in Alliance, 78 in Ogallala. There's an 87 in Wheatland and an 86 right now up in Lusk. But unfortunately, the winds have been at it today as well. Southeast at 15 to 20, 25 miles an hour at times as well. And we have some gustier winds with some storms developing out here in eastern portions of Wyoming. Well, we're going to be keeping a close eye on the severe weather threat over the next several days. We'll start with tonight the best threat of severe weather, the slight risk up here in Montana. In our area, though, we do have a marginal risk of severe storms. That's a very that's the lowest risk level here on the uh, Storm Prediction Center, that marginal risk. That is, again, the lowest risk area, and it is for uh, portions of western Nebraska, eastern Wyoming, and down into northeastern Colorado. That changes tomorrow. We actually have an enhanced risk. So notice we go from the first level up to the third, an enhanced risk of severe storms outlined from these areas of far southeastern Montana through eastern Wyoming, western South Dakota, and then right here in the western portions of the Panhandle and back into eastern Wyoming along and east of I-25. That is the enhanced risk. The slight risk area is further to the east of that and covers almost the rest of the Panhandle. So tomorrow going to be a day that we really have to keep an eye on for severe weather. And then that pushes off to the east of us primarily as we go into Thursday. Thunderstorm chances are really going to decrease. Now for tomorrow, we're talking about large hail, damaging winds being the primary threat. Large hail will be the biggest of the threat, but we cannot rule out an isolated tornado. And where this is going to be our first opportunity of the season uh, to be talking about uh, some potential tornadic activity in our area, we want to know what those tornado terms mean. And remember this, a watch, you can see nothing going on here. Conditions are favorable for tornadoes to form. You don't need to take action on a tornado watch. Just be prepared. That is what you should be doing if a tornado watch is issued. Now, if a tornado warning is issued, that means you need to take action. A tornado has been spotted or indicated by radar. You can see that here. And then a tornado emergency, that is the rarest and the highest level that they issue. That means you need to seek immediate shelter. Uh, there's a severe threat to human life and catastrophic damage. These are reserved for the higher tornado uh, scale tornadoes and that are heading towards populated areas. So again, if you are under a tornado emergency at any point in time, it is nothing to, uh, to sneeze at, certainly a tornado warning either. So if you get into the warning or the emergency section, that's when you really wanna take shelter. Again, if we're in a tornado watch, which likely will happen tomorrow or certainly possibly could happen, that's when you just know that conditions are favorable and you're going to want to stay tuned and stay up to date. A few thunderstorms off to our east tonight. They're going to, or west, they're going to rumble across the area through the early overnight hours before they end. A few of them could move into the western portions of Nebraska, most of them in eastern Wyoming. Lows tonight going to be generally speaking out here in the 50s. And then as we go to tomorrow, we're going to start the day with partly cloudy skies, but things are going to turn interesting in a hurry as we go through the afternoon hours. We get through noon, 1, 2, 3 o'clock, okay. Then thunderstorms are going to start to develop in the high country, and they're going to traverse across to the east. Now, this particular model, model is holding on to the thunderstorm chances till later tomorrow night. You can see them really get going by 9, 10 o'clock here and organize into a line. If that happens, we'll be looking for a damaging wind threat here across the region, and those storms push on off to the north and east and away from us as we go through the overnight hours tomorrow night. 70s off to the east, 80s off to the west of us, and we're going to have uh, some upper 70s to near 80 right here in the middle. Everybody going to be uh, kind of a muggy day tomorrow with those southeasterly winds. And right now, uh, the National Weather Service, or this particular model, dumping quite a bit of rain on us uh, with some widespread areas here, right in that enhanced risk of severe weather from a half to three quarters of an inch and certainly double or three times that not out of the question if you get under one of those stronger thunderstorms. So again, uh, scattered storms around early through the evening hours, 57 for your low. Tomorrow, the real deal, a severe weather day is unfolding for tomorrow. Storms develop by late in the afternoon, especially in the evening hours. Be weather ready tomorrow. In addition, it's going to be windy throughout the day. 25, 35 sustained winds 
blowing out of that southeast. Temps at about 79 and then things quiet down considerably once we get beyond tomorrow. Really Thursday in the mid 70s, Friday back to near 80. Saturday, Sunday, the first two days of the Memorial Day weekend, not bad. A couple degrees either side of 70. We warm up a bit by Monday and then Tuesday of next week. We're into the low 80s again, but uh, all in all, the most active time tonight and then especially tomorrow. Stay tuned. We'll keep you up to date on the very latest right here on KNEB.TV. At 21st Century Equipment, we're proud to introduce the new Build Your Own Tool. Build the John Deere you've been wanting and see how affordable it really is. Visit 21stCenturyEquipment.net to build your own compact utility tractor, mower, or gator. It's easy to add implements, attachments, and view financing options. Build the exact tractor for your needs at a price you can afford, all from the comfort and safety of home, with a new Build Your Own Tool at 21stCenturyEquipment.net. As farmers make plans to return to their fields for spring planting, we urge farmers to be alert to the dangers of working near overhead power lines. Electricity is one of the most overlooked, yet deadly hazards of working on a farm. Beware of increased height when loading and transporting equipment on trailers. Avoid raising the arms of planters or cultivators or raising truck beds near power lines. So let's take extra caution this spring planting season. This message brought to you by Roosevelt Public Power District, your touchstone energy partner, the power of human connections. At TCN Moore in Scotts Bluff, we have toys and puzzles for your children, or they make a great gift. TCN Moore has craft activities, pretend play toys, and dozens of puzzles and games for all ages. We also have the largest supply of Melissa and Doug toys, and we still carry all of your classroom essentials. Remember to like TCN Moore on Facebook. TCN Moore, 1621 Broadway, beautiful downtown Scotts Bluff. Welcome back. Nebraska lawmakers will resume their regular session on July 20th, four months after they last met to approve emergency coronavirus funding. The new schedule calls for lawmakers to meet every weekday until August 13th, with the exception of August 7th and August 10th. Lawmakers abruptly postponed their session in late March amid fears that close contact would help spread the coronavirus. They have 17 days remaining in this year's 60-day session. It's unclear how the virus and the economic damage that followed will affect bills that were pending. Well, Nebraska farmers have planted most of the expected corn crop and are making good progress on soybean planting. The U.S. Department of Agriculture reported yesterday that farmers had planted 91% of the corn crop as of Sunday, putting them far ahead of the 63% they had planted by this time last year. The five-year average for this date is 78%. In addition, farmers had planted 78% of expected soybeans, more than doubling the 34% from this time last year. And law enforcement agencies across the state are teaming up to encourage seatbelt use during the annual spring Click It or Ticket campaign. The campaign runs from now until May 31st and coincides with the mission of the Nebraska Department of Transportation Highway Safety Office to continue the increase of seatbelt use in Nebraska. NSB Colonel John Bullock says travel patterns have certainly been impacted by the pandemic, but it's still important for everybody on the road to drive safely and buckle up. He adds that troopers continue to patrol Nebraska's roadways and will be working hard to keep Nebraska safe. Well, straight ahead, Shabella Guzman will be in with a check in on Ag News. She'll have that right after this on KNEB.TV News. Yeah, I like to snag a couple crinkle fries before I pass it to the back. It's the dad tax, kiddos and everyone's got to pay. This chair is way too big. It's perfect for us. This one's tiny. That's because it's mine. Hey, this chair is just right. This bed is way too hard. It's perfect for me. This bed is way too soft. Ah, uh, just what I needed. This bed is just right. So come on over to Leaf Heads. Home buying is filled with decisions. Neighborhood, floor plan, fenced yard. Make one choice that's easy. Start with FNBO first. We'll guide you home. Home buying is filled with decisions. Square feet, Fixer Upper, Room to Grow, 
Make one choice that's easy. Start with FNBO first. We'll guide you home. This is KNEB.TV Ag News from the FNBO Ag Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. Farm bankruptcies in the last 12-month period and commodities down has the economic outlook for agriculture looking bleak. Tom Sell, former U.S. House Agriculture Committee Deputy Chief of Staff, during a recent Platt Institute webinar, says it's tough as farmers have very few ways to manage risk. He discusses how ag programs have been weakened. We always have a farm bill that, that is designed to provide some support, but really, you know, in the last two farm bills, so it was rewritten in 14, and about $23 billion was taken out of the Farm Bill to fund other priorities. And then it was rewritten in 2019 as a baseline Farm Bill, no increases. So I think the basic belief is if we're just relying on ARC or PLC, they're not going to do the trick. Um, they aren't going to provide the sufficient level of support our farmers need. Sell says Congress in the next few weeks will begin talking about how they can provide an adequate safety net. They're talking about an injection of uh, an increase to the CCC authority of up to $68 billion, an injection of another 30 to $50 billion into the ag economy for 2020. I wish it were there already because I know that farmers have the plan and they're looking down the barrel of, of what is just a very depressing uh, ag outlook right now. So Congress needs to move quickly to give farmers something to, bet, to bank on. The U.S. government so far has paid out $2.4 trillion for coronavirus relief and could add another $3 trillion with the HEROES Act that has been passed in the House and is now in the Senate. Small business, you're the engine that makes our communities thrive. That's why we're with you, providing more for you, so you can focus on what matters most. Small business, you're the engine that makes our communities thrive. That's why we're with you, providing more for you, so you can earn more, save more, and do more. Get the incredible power of iPhone SE free from VR Wireless. It's the most affordable way to experience iPhone, along with our share more or unlimited plans. Stay connected to life with all the talk, text, and data you can handle. Now starting as low as $30 a month per line. So make the switch to Viero today at your friendly local store or with our new limited contact takeout service or online at Viero.com. Viero Wireless, where we make you our priority. See full offer details at Viero.com. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar.
That's a look at today's community calendar, brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. At Elite Physical Therapy, we provide preventative and rehabilitative treatments that maximize function and promote well-being for patients of all ages. With two locations in Scotts Bluff and Gearing, we offer the convenience of you choosing your location with the same great services no matter where you go. Stop into one of our locations today in Scotts Bluff at 214 West 27th Street or in Gearing at 10th and M Street and see what Elite Physical Therapy can do for you. Treatment you need and care you deserve. May is Beef Month, a time to celebrate the high quality beef products that are raised by farmers and ranchers right here in Nebraska. With over 5 million cattle fed and marketed each year, Nebraska is the number one cattle feeding state in the country. From steaks and roasts to ground beef and kebabs, Nebraska's beef producers take pride in raising safe, wholesome products that end up on dinner plates around the world. Join the beef community by celebrating Beef Month with your favorite beef meal tonight. Beef, it's what's for dinner in Nebraska. Sponsored by Frank Parts Company, Marker Ag, and 21st Century Equipment. At Platte Valley Bank, we want you to plan for tomorrow Will you enjoy today. With our personalized trust and estate planning services, our trust services can help you do just that. When it comes to estate planning, you should seek professional help. And when you do, you should have confidence in the financial institution you choose to handle your trust. At Platte Valley Bank, we pride ourselves in keeping our trust operations local and serving our friends and neighbors. We offer a highly personalized, full line of personal trust and estate planning. Give us a call today and see how our trust services can help you. And finally tonight, a four-part plan on returning city operations close to normal was discussed during last night's Scotts Bluff City Council meeting. Phase one is the current operational situation with the addition of a return to in-person council meetings that started last night. Depending on the changes to the governor's directed health measures and advice from public health officials, additional changes would tentatively take place June 1st for phase two and July and June 15th or July 1st for the third phase with increasing opening of offices, services, and facilities. By July 13th, the tentative plan indicates nearly all services and facilities could reopen with social distancing encouraged at a minimum and the public being asked to conduct business with the city over the phone, by mail, or online whenever possible. The council also discussed future meeting locations to allow more attendance with social distancing and a contract extension for interim city manager, Rick Kukan. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.